Hi everyone, my name is Suzanne Vernon and I'm the research director at the Bateman Horn Center. Um, happy 2020 to everybody. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on one of the one of our exciting research projects that we are doing at the Bateman Horn Center. It will focus on um, postural biomarkers as outcome measures for MECFS. First, I'd like to start by giving you a little bit of um, background on why um, the Bateman Horn Center actually focuses on these types of research projects. Back in 2013, the FDA um, provided guidance, created a guidance document for um, drug development in MECFS, and they started by giving a little bit of background on the, the regulatory process that is used for drug development in any and every disease. And they emphasize that you must start with the disease defining concepts. That is specifically the core signs, symptoms, and decrements in specific functioning that occurs in, in disease. There are also these proximal disease um, effects and distal disease effects that um, are also important to consider, but you have to start here, start at the very beginning with the core signs, symptoms, or decrements in specific functioning. And they, they emphasized um, in kind of creating this, this guidance, guidance document that clinical trials and drug development um, for MECFS in particular has been constrained because we lack um, validated objective measures in order to show treatment benefit for MECFS. So this document was actually intended to help um, overcome some of these constraints. And they recommended that um, we that reliable instruments be used to measure um, effects, patient in, um, including patient reported symptoms as outcome measures, as well as objective ways to uh, quantitatively measure um, treatment benefit. So with this, we use this really as um, the framework for a major part of our research department and program at the Bateman Horn Center. Specifically, we have a long um, history of clinical insight and intuition that has really helped shape our program um, and put us in a really good position to be able to uh, do what the FDA has recommended. So we have several thousand patients at the Bateman Horn Center and over the process of the past 18 years have made um, a lot of clinical uh, observations, especially over the 1,000 or so patients that have participated in research. And one of the um, observations that has been consistently made by our providers is that patients who, um, patient, patients with their legs um, elevated or with less feet on time with their feet on the floor, that includes sitting at a desk, for example, or sitting in a chair, um, actually had more severe MECFS disease. So because of this observation, we put together a small study. This was about 50 um, participants, 25 uh, patients and 25 healthy controls shown in this table here. And 12 of those uh, patients had severe MECFS and 14 were moderate. So that's actually 26, not 25, and 25 healthy controls. And they were asked to record the amount of time that they were in upright position. And that includes standing, walking, running, sitting with their feet on the floor, reclining or seating with feet elevated or lying down, which includes sleeping. And what this table shows is that patients, both severe and moderate, have significantly less upright time 
than people who are healthy. And moderately uh, ill ME-CFS patients have significantly more time upright than severely ill patients. So with this, we've decided to, it was really important to try to develop um, an objective way to measure this upright activity because we believe that it could be used as, uh, potentially used as an outcome measure for um, clinical trials and also important for clinical management of our patient population. So our area of expertise is not necessarily in um, developing objective ways to measure this. We made the clinical um, observation. So what we did was we reached out to some experts that we thought would be able, would be interested in, in working with us to develop um, a wearable device that could do the, the measuring of upright activity on their own. So we partnered with Shad Roundy, who is an associate professor at the University of Utah in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. His lab is the Integrated Self-Powered Sensing Laboratory, which is also a very interesting endeavor. And he um, um, has a graduate student, Turner Palumbo, uh, who's also in the, uh, his department, in Chad's department. And we have uh, Andrea Campos, who is our clinical research coordinator at the Bateman Horn Center. So with that, um, Shad and the team developed a protocol to be able to determine how best to measure upright activity. And we call this uptime for upright posture time. And our goal was to try to develop a device that would accurately and unobtrusively measure upright posture for very long periods of time. Because as we know, clinical trials to determine whether or not there's benefit for a clinical trial may require weeks to months um, of measuring to see if there's treatment benefit. And our goal for this project was actually to gauge disease severity and objectively measure treatment benefit. So what Shad um, and the team determined was that the device would probably be best placed on the lower leg because from our clinical observations, we saw that um, disease, the, the more sick someone was, the more time their leg was actually elevated. So here, think of, it, think of that as being able to detect position and motion by having this cone, this imaginary cone placed around the leg. And there's obviously the device is able to measure um, the position on a number of different axes. And this is the device that we chose to use for this project. This is actually a clinical research device called Shimmer. So it's a, a tiny, small little device that did exactly what we needed to do. Um, although it's not necessarily something that you would want to try to um, use right off the shelf because it's, it's, it's bare minimum of what it needs to do, but it worked for us. First step in our project was actually to calibrate it because again, accuracy is really important. We need to understand exactly what it is, exactly what position um, the individual is in so that we can differentiate up to, up, upright time, up time from any other um, position. So here we the device on both legs and the um, calibration occurred in a motion laboratory. Here nine cameras, not all the cameras are shown here, but nine cameras are placed in the room and the individual with the device on either leg also has a number of um, other sensors on the body so that the cameras can actually zoom in on the sensors and detect that position, that is then um, aligned with what the 
shimmer is actually detecting. And this, um, the shimmer measures the, the does measurements um, each second. Here's the first, or actually it's probably um, one of the many runs that we did in order to be able to calibrate the devices. Each of these colors represents a different position. Here's sitting with lower legs vertical, sitting at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, sitting with lower legs horizontal, sitting with legs on a stool, walking, and then sitting uh, lower legs vertical. And what you can see is that the device actually does a pretty good job of detecting the position of the lower leg because this green line down here is actually the error of the, um, of the, of the device measurement. And during the walking or the actual movement part, there is um, more error, which basically indicated that this was an, uh, a kind of a uh, part of the motion detection that we had to work on a little bit more on in order to be able to calibrate and optimize the, the algorithms in order to lessen that error. But this was a very encouraging um, first step in the device development. So we knew that we could detect position. So then we then put it to the test. And the test included 15 patient or 15 participants, 10 patients, five being severely ill and five being moderately ill, as well as five healthy controls. And each person came in to the um, Bateman Horn Center uh, research department and were outfitted on day one with the device. Now you can see that this device, it's the same shimmer buried underneath all that stuff there, but we had to make it so that the device wouldn't move um, and could be waterproofed so that it could be worn over the time of the um, entire testing period. So the shimmer is underneath there, it's wrapped in a latex uh, glove, like a little lab glove, and then it's, it's kept in place with some tegaderm, and then it's further kept in place with some coban. So once the individual comes into the clinic and gets outfitted, they answer some um, baseline questionnaires, how you feeling today, and some other symptom questions, and then they go home for three days. After three days, they come back, um, and go through the 10 minute lean test. This is an orthostatic challenge because um, we know that the orthostatic challenge in our patient population um, can increase uh, symptom severity. So we hypothesize that by um, giving the lean test that we would actually induce a change in, in upright activity. After the lean test, they um, go home again for three more days of data collection. And at the end, which is seven days later, um, uh, some more questionnaires are, are answered. So um, we just finished up the testing of all 15 subjects. So, so this, the data that's actually collected from the shimmer is in the process of being um, analyzed. Remember, it collects a data point each second for 24 hours a day for seven days. So that's a whole bunch of data. Um, so I don't have any of that data to show you yet, but I will probably in the next two months or so. I do have some um, of the symptom data to show you that um, the idea that using the lean test to in, in, induce um, symptoms and potentially affect the amount of time that patients are upright um, looks like it will hold up. This blue bar, so this is, these are just symptoms before and after the lean test. The blue bar is um, healthy control. The orange are the um, moderately ill patients and the
the gray um, is the, are the severe patients. And what you can see is that before um, and after the lean test, healthy controls, there are no change in symptom severity. Um, moderately ill and severely ill symptoms um, increase in both populations. So again, we anticipate that this will course correspond with a decrease in upright activity and the, the possibility that the shimmer will, the, the device, the wearable device will detect that. And um, that will be good news because then we will have succeeded in our first step of, of developing a device that can um, objectively and passively, unobtrusively measure uh, uptime. So co coincident with us doing the experiment, another group at the University of Utah led by Mark Felberg, um, we're looking at device de design. And this is also important because again, as you can imagine, when you are participating in a clinical trial and wearing a device that's actually going to be measuring um, the, the effect of that treatment that it needs to be comfortable and dur durable. So Mark Felberg is the director of graduate studies. He had his class actually do this as their class project last semester. And what they did was really focus on the comfort and the durability factor first because comfort is super important in order to be able to get accurate measurements. Durability is also important to, from, to keep it waterproof and, and so that it it's not, um, doesn't move around and isn't affected by things like impact or putting your clothes on and off, et cetera. So they used a small block, wooden block, that was the same size as the device, put it here on the ankle or here on the back of the calf, using Tegaderm and or um, using a mesh sleeve again with it um, secured to the ankle or the back of the calf. And they did a number, I think they, they tested 10 participants with these variations and, um, and they also answered a bunch of surveys and they did a, a pretty interesting statistical analysis. And the, the uh, result was that this sleeve, this mesh sleeve with the device on the ankle was the most comfortable and likely to be the most durable. Some of the other features that we will, be, we will continue to explore is battery life, again, because we want the device to be worn for long periods of time, and also size and shape. So many things go into the design of a reliable device that can be used for clinical trials and used for, um, for patient management in general. We're really excited about the possibility of, of this device for helping us on both of those fronts. And um, I look forward to giving you some more information and uh, data from the from the, from the results of this little study um, within the next couple of months. Finally, I'd like to just give a shout out to all of the per participants that um, were part of this study and also um, people that have donated to BHC to make this study, this kind of research possible, um, as well as to the SOLVE MECFS initiative um, who funded part of this study with the Ramsey Award. Thanks again. I look forward to touching base with you in a couple of months to give you the results of the data analysis from our experiment and um, what we're going to be doing next. Thanks again.